In 1970, William Wyckoff Smith went looking for a tall ship for Philadelphia. As one of the founders of the Philadelphia Maritime Museum, he knew that a world-class port such as Philadelphia deserved a tangible representation of its long maritime history. By that time, the last remnants of American merchant sailing ships were long gone. The trend of replica shipbuilding had not yet begun in earnest, so he searched worldwide for the last holdouts of working sail. In Portugal, he found the barkentine Gazella Primero. Described by Alan Villiers as the ideal sail training vessel, she was conservatively rigged, small enough to be crewed by novice mariners. She was built heavily for the North Atlantic in 1901 and spent nearly 70 years fishing the Grand Banks for cod. As part of a tradition dating back centuries, she would sail out every spring with 90 tons of salt in her hold and return in the fall with 350 tons of salt cod. In a remarkable contrast of the 20th century, Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin were walking on the moon while Gazella's crew were still hand lining for cod from one man dories. As early as the 1930s, the pressure on the Grand Bank's cod stocks forced the Portuguese fleet to look to the Davis Strait to fill her holds. Fluky winds, strong tides, and icebergs made for tricky sailing. So in 1938, Gazella received her first engine and in the process acquired the graceful transom which she has today. In 1969, Canada expanded its exclusive fishing zone to 200 miles and European vessels were effectively shut out of the Grand Banks. Gazella's career as a fishing ship was over. Nevertheless, this stout vessel still had a long life ahead of her when a volunteer crew sailed her to her new home in Philadelphia in 1971. Since coming to Philadelphia, Gazella and her crew have been seagoing ambassadors for the city of Philadelphia and the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. Through earlier periods of ownership by the Philadelphia Maritime Museum and Penn's Landing Corporation, a core of dedicated Gazella volunteers evolved into the Philadelphia Ship Preservation Guild, obtaining ownership of the vessel in 1990. Since then, we have built a vibrant community of people from all walks of life, brought together by a shared love of history and a common purpose. We have trained generations of sailors and made hundreds of port visits, inspiring people young and old with real experiences of maritime history. She has been featured in movies and television productions and has participated in nearly every op sail and tall ship event on the East Coast since 1976. Over the years, the Guild has completed major projects, including recoppering in 1985, retopping in 1991, and redecking in 2002. With the help of generous donors such as the W.W. W. Smith Charitable Trust, we have repaired or replaced many parts of Gazella above the waterline, including a partial rebuild of the transom and recently replacing the anchor windlass. Like every other volunteer-run organization, the Guild was hit hard by the shutdown in 2020 and ongoing COVID restrictions. Our small but mighty professional crew have managed to keep repair projects going, and now with widespread vaccination, we are seeing a surge of new and returning volunteers. Despite her formidable impact on our community, the Gazella never had a home of her own. With the looming redevelopment of the Penn's Landing site, it's unclear if there will be a home for the PSPG. She has depended on the generosity of the Delaware River Waterfront Corporation for her dockage and that of our workshop barge, Poplar. While this provides marvelous public visibility, it is far from ideal for repair work and limits our ability to develop educational programming for the community. After over a century of sea service, Gazella needs major hull rebuild. During our 2015 dry docking, we did a thorough survey of the ship with an eye to identifying the scope of that project. We have developed a detailed rebuild plan which involves replacing a substantial per percentage of her hull structure and a complete recalking and recoppering. We're actively harvesting and stockpiling suitable timbers for framing and planking from locally donated trees. Her size and the duration of this project limit the commercial shipyard options available. We need a large number of skilled and semi-skilled workers to join us on this effort, which presents both a challenge and an opportunity. With the cutbacks in school funding, trades education has been severely curtailed. 
We have a unique opportunity to use the ship as a venue to teach young Philadelphians practical job skills and set them on a productive career path. Long focused on sailing the ship to faraway ports, we've now reimagined the Guild with an ambitious plan right here at home. We are working towards a return to blue, a blue water capable gazella, empowering a new generation with job skills through a trades and maritime education program, and an active maritime shipyard for the Mid-Atlantic to further those goals. Our dream is to build our own facility. Acquiring waterfront property and building this facility will enable the ongoing maritime preservation work of the Guild, create a venue for education programming, and provide public access and engagement with the working waterfront that built the city. Toward this end, we are in negotiations to secure waterfront property in Philadelphia to build a preservation shipyard and education center. This shipyard will feature a lift dock capable of handling gazella and also accommodate other historic, replica, and educational vessels in the Mid-Atlantic region. The skills learned through maintaining and repairing large wooden sailing ships can be applied to future careers in trades, maritime or not. Much needed skills like carpentry, welding, and diesel mechanics readily translate to other industries. Gazella Primero represents more than just a Portuguese fishing ship. As the last remaining example of a turn of the century merchant barkentine, she represents the tractor trailer of her day, a type built by seafaring nations the world over. She is a living connection to our seafaring heritage and thus a world treasure. But her existence for future generations to experience is by no means certain. The best efforts of our hardworking volunteers and few professional shipwrights are only serving to hold place in the battle against water intrusion and decay. Without the major hull rebuild we envision, Gazella is doomed to a slow demise. A precious piece of maritime history is at risk of being lost. I started my maritime career as a volunteer aboard Gazella when I was still in high school. In the first few years, she didn't sail much or often out of concern for her condition. Then, after the Baltimore work in 1991, I experienced what it meant to be part of the crew of a sailing ship in service. That confirmed my eventual career path as a shipwright and captain. But what I've come to recognize, and what I tell people on the ship today, is that I didn't get to sail on Gazella because of the work that I did, but because of what generations before me did. That's who we're working for now. The little kid who doesn't even know yet that an old Portuguese fishboat will one day change their life.